we were talking about the etiology of colon cancer. The epithelium of the colon swims in its own waste year after year. Those cells, they can't, they can't expel their own waste because they're swimming in waste. So eventually, they do a normal adaptation to an abnormal stressor and we have metaplasia. We have the cells become abnormal. They keep growing, they keep proliferating, but they can no longer specialize. That's a definition of cancer, that's a definition of tumor. But in this particular instance, it is this disease, cancer of the colon. It's a survival mechanism. Those cells, that part of the colon, it's trying to survive. It realizes it can no longer survive in this toxic environment that you created by eating all this trashy food for the last 25 years. So, disease as normal adaptation to abnormal stressors. So, John, you're going to bring that one home, right? Yes, sir. Okay. What drives the body? The central nervous system drives the body. Well then, what drives the central nervous system? The environment. Our afferent neurology get information every second of your life from the environment at every level. Now Heidi says this, subluxation represents a state of altered afferent input which is responsible for ongoing maladaptive central plastic changes, right? Brain patterns. Do you know that we have, it's at least three times the number of afferent neurology as we do efferent. We have many more receptors from the environment because it just makes sense. That's evolution. That's survival. So these maladaptive central plastic changes that can lead to dysfunction because we're getting, we're getting distorted information from the environment which includes the external parts of our body too. Incorrect information goes into our brain which has to send out commands about what to do, alterations, calibrations. It's giving the wrong orders because it's getting the wrong information coming in. That's your note number one from Heidi. Other modes of cell communication, non-synaptic transmission. Non-synaptic transmission, right on schedule here and extra neural pathways. There's a lot of science on this particular topic, but I don't want it to get too voodoo here, but I just want to mention this, that there are some types of activity that the human body is capable of, which can't really be accounted for by the slow process of synaptic transmission, synaptic, what you know, which involves this nerve impulse going to this synapse, crossing over, going to the next one, crossing over, going to the next one. All that takes time. There are some levels of, of physical activity that not only humans, that mammals can do that cannot really be explained by synaptic transmission. Carl De Stefano is the master of describing this. This is your note number seven. Here's what he says. Extra neural pathways or non-synaptic transmission is hypothesized by neuroscientists to explain phenomena that occur too quickly to be explained by synaptic transmission of information. What the hell am I talking about? Let's, let's look at some examples here. I went to a lecture by, this is Isak Perlman. Did, how many, you guys ever see, I mean he is the world's premier freaking virtuoso violinist, right? Uh, you ever see Schindler's List? That's him, okay. I went to a lecture by him at a college up north and uh, Isak Perlman and watched this guy. Lightning speeds, the movement of his fingers cannot be explained by synaptic transmission. It's, it's at another level. So here's an example where something like the speed of the horse's feet occurs so fast that it cannot be explained by the time it would take 
neurotransmitters to fill the synaptic clefts and then be cleared by acetylcholinesterase and then go to the next neuron. All of this for each step is happening too fast. Non-synaptic transmission. This is Secretariat in Belmont, 1973. Just watch this horse's feet. Probably the most famous horse race in history. Just Belmont six. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with Christ the Prince on the outside. Secretary to away very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. They're moving for the first turn. It is Secretariat. Sham on the outside is also moving along strongly. And now it's Sham. Sham and Secretariat are right together into the first turn. Mike Gallant has third behind them. Then it's twice the Prince, and the trailer is Private Smiles as they go by the turn. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretary at second. Then there's a large gap. Make it eight lengths back to Mike Gallant in third and Vice of Prince fourth. And Private Smiles is still a trailer. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside by a head. Sham is on the outside. They've opened 10 lengths on Mike Gallant, who is third by a head, with Vice of Prince fourth. Then it's another eight lengths back to Private Smiles, who is trailing the field. They continue down the back stretch, and that's Secretariat now taking the lead. He's got it by about a length and a half. Still Sham, 10 lengths back. Mike Gallant, Vice of Prince. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn at Secretariat, it looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. Jam is second, and then it's a long way back to Mike Allen and twice a print. They're on the turn. It's Secretariat is blazing along the first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Sham is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Allen and Vice of Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that is impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now Price of Prince has taken second, and Mike Gallant has moved back to third. They're in the stretch. Secretariat has opened a 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. It's going to be Price of Prince second. Third. Here's Edward Van Halen. So look at some of the solos at some of their live concerts. This is on YouTube as well. You can't explain these 30 second notes runs, you know, by synaptic transmission. So this is, this is what we're talking about here. So there's another guy who talks about these extra neural pathways and the relationship to epigenetics. These guys are saying, now this is Bruce Lipton, right? The cells are controlled by cell membranes, not just the DNA. We all have a blueprint in all our cells, right? Our own DNA that makes every, that is, every cell is like every other cell in your body. That's how your body recognizes you, your DNA. And the DNA controls cell operations, right? But now we know that there are, that's not the only thing that controls the operation of our cells and our tissues and our bodies. It's also epigenetic effects, okay? There is a lot of legitimate science on this, and Bruce Lipton is a good starting point. Bruce Lipton talks about these intramembrane proteins, these proteins that are in your cell membranes that are able to read environmental signals and then trans transmit these signals to your brain and to the cell. And it activates the genes. 
So here's an illustration of, of what these intramembrane proteins might look like, but they're receptors of information from the environment. This is not a theory, this has been completely documented. So Lipton says this, the most powerful effects of chiropractic are at the energetic level, not the neural level. And this, th this is coming full circle to Didi's idea, what, what was that word he used? to describe the overall effect of the body, the salubrious effect of the adjustment on the overall human structure. We refer to that as tone. He talked about tone. That, that's exactly what Lipton is talking about here. You know, there's this classic dialogue, what makes me like I am with all my defects, with all my talents, with all my skills, and all my, do I attribute all that to my parents? and my genetics, or does my experience control that? Well, it turns out it's a combination. Heredity and environment is a combination between you're born with a certain amount of genetic potential, possibility of development and talents, but then your own, what happens to you in your life, you're taking all that in at all times. And the combination of both of these two inputs ends up being the being that is you. So I always use this thing, remember, remember that Eddie Murphy movie, Trading Places, where he's like a beggar on the street, and these two rich guys uh, say, well, we can make a, you know, da da da, heredity, environment, heredity, environment, remember that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about there. Okay, so the very newest science that shows how chiropractic adjustments improve function is that Subluxation leads to altered afferent input, okay? The brain is trying to get information from, not only from your, your body, but from the whole environment, how to react. And this altered, incorrect information coming into the brain distorts your cortical architecture in the brain. It can be normalized, this whole errant pattern can be normalized by high velocity adjustments. That's not magic or voodoo or a theory. This is fact. It's been proven.